Geza, thank you so, so much for joining us. You are already known to the Vendetti Foundation because <laughs> you did the most incredible project with us um, yeah. a few months ago. And um, we all still talk about it and talk about you all the time. <laughs> yeah, I'm still sharing too the videos. Like people really loved it. it you, you made a huge great. impression on all of us. So thank, thank you, thank you, thank so, you. So much. my pleasure. Um, so this, uh, this workshop, these sessions are about the general physicality and general mindset and psychology mm. of, of playing an instrument. So I wanted to ask you a few questions about that. Um, mm. The first being, would you say you have a philosophy about the general physicality of how you play the violin? Um. Not really general, not very much general, because we all change, you know, um, by aging, you know, like uh, maybe I have some some years now, maybe like three or four years that I have changed some things. Mm -hmm. But of course, there are some basics which I try to stick, stick to. Uh, the more natural, the better. But um, yeah, uh, there are some things like, for instance, um, just wanted to tell you to change, you know, maybe not to play with the shoulder rest because mm -hmm. I'm trying to, um, you know, maybe feel more free like the old guys played before. It's it sound, The violin sounds also much better. And, but, you know, if you get used to the shoulder rest, it's quite difficult to, <laughs> to get, just, rid of it. Uh, uh, get rid of it. Yeah. So on this, the more natural, the better. Can you maybe take us through a little bit of your early years playing and mm. how do you approach now that the more natural, the better? What, what does that look like? Look, I, I think because of my uh, folklore background, you know, in folklore music, and I had the privilege to, to learn different ways and uh, um, not maybe holding the violin because in Hungarian, uh, Hungarian gypsy music, they, they hold it quite classical, they have a classical uh, basics and stuff, but, um, you know, just um, the music itself makes you, uh, you can't really be uh, uh, stiff, let's say stiff by playing uh, folklore music, you know, you really need to be free and um, kind of uh, spontaneous, you know, so, so but um, I think uh, I had my first before Dora Schwarzberg, I was taking lessons with Marina Sorokova, who left us just two years ago. I really loved her. She was my first really important teacher. And um, she, for instance, I think the, the most important, as you know, is the very first few lessons you have in the teacher. That's very important and you can get um, to anybody. So it depends on many things. But uh, my, my approach was basically to to um, um, play, for instance, scales. Um, she made sure I play scales with vibrato at the beginning already. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, and not learn it afterwards, like forcing it like many people do, many teachers, then slowly they get to the, they first learn the notes. Um, that, that th I think, helped me because it has also a philosophy, you know, to look, you know, to learn it naturally as you hold the violin, the movements, you know, and the thing I told you about, that that's that comes from the folklore, you know, gypsy thing. This 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 one, yeah, here is this one. That comes also from the old old guys like Menuhin. You know, when you see them, they they always move this thing. So, yeah. Um, and anything more about the right the right hand, the right arm? Uh, right hand is <laughs> is a very complicated thing with me because I was with Dora and that was um, Belgo Frank French Belgian French school, so um, it was supposed to be like this, something like round, more round. Mm -hmm. And then when I was eleven or twelve, I went to Varga Tibor Varga, which was completely like this. <laughs> so, it, so it was a sudden change. The good thing about both that you later on you get to to mix this both and then yes. you you adapt yourself to what is good for you. You. Yes. I had some uh, I had quite some problems in like ten years ago 
maybe uh, the business more be the left hand uh, because the thumb, you know, I still I still use it because I like to have it like this sometimes because mm -hmm. people say it should be very straight and relaxed, mm -hmm. but I don't. I think yeah, it sh for me personally, it's. Um, it's a mix of everything, depending on the positions for yourself, for your arm, for your hand. Everybody's different, also. So, you know. That's so. I, I, what I'm taking from everything you're saying, and I also went from one school of thought in bow hold and how to hold. Right, right, right. Change teacher, everything changes. Change teacher again, everything changes, right. and. Um, uh, I only started to discover my balance when I stopped with any teacher. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. I really just yeah, yeah. started teaching myself. I started picking, you know, the right things okay. from all the teachers and then putting yeah. them into something that felt more comfortable for me. But I'm always, yeah. like you said, changing and um, adjusting. Adjusting, right. right. Adjusting, yeah. Um, you see, um, I, I think like everybody's really different, like some have, have you know, just smaller fingers, brighter hands, you know, uh, thin hands, versus longer fingers, or, you know, everybody's really different. I think bas basically, and of course, uh, the instrument, for instance, I, I played in a free quarter and I went really early on and I'm not so huge. I mean, I'm at 166, 65. So, but um, at age 13, you know, the already 12, maybe even. I, so I got really early a full violin size, mm -hmm. which is an advantage or disadvantage. I don't know now, but I think like when people play viola for violins, it's really good to play viola because after you play the violin, it's quite, feels really small. Yeah. And those kind of adventures, maybe that's, that's a thing that, um, well, okay, uh, speaking about Tibor Varga, when I was 11, so I got to him, and then he, he just took off the shoulder rest, for instance. Mm -hmm. And that was, a, that was a difficult time for me. And um, so... Um, and and how, how did you deal with the thumb? How did you cope with the thumb during that transition? Because that's very, a huge change. To not have the shoulder rest. Oh yeah, it was yeah, it was very difficult. But okay, he he, for instance, of course, if you have the shoulder rest, you see, you you are more free to do with your thumb, of course, because you don't really need to hold and play the thing. Yeah. When you take it out, you're supposed to find the right position here, already here. So you yeah. know, many most of the people play really, even, I mean, yeah, I mean, more to the right side. Yeah. To get this one more flexible. I mean, the, the thumb. But I like to stay this way, you know. A bit more forward? More. Yeah, a bit more forward. But then I really needed to hold, and so I was trying all sorts of things. And then finally I went to the middle, and that helped me to, to more stay in here and, uh, and move. Of course, uh, uh, the thumb, as many people don't know, but you, you sure talk about the thumb a lot. And I, I hear always more. Uh, you know, uh, talking about uh, the thumb because actually thumb is sometimes even more, mostly more, more important than the rest of the fingers because they, 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 that really moves you where you need to be. And if this one is sure, and you, know, I mean, it can be like this, like this. You know, Perlman, this is Perlman's fingers, just yeah. the way. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know what I mean. Yes. So, uh, I, I always focus on the thumb first. So without playing them, I play them, but not really hitting the, the strings. See, I do, I do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That, um, yeah, that helps me. The thumb. Yeah, I, I uh, always am reviewing my thumb position all the time, and and if I um, am practicing very stressed for mm -hmm. many hours, my thumb starts to go back like this, and this squeeze. This squeeze, I had it too. I had it and, too. But for me, it's much better if it's round, like the much more like this. Um, but round, like my, if, if I if I stop um, being conscious, mm -hmm. this starts like this, and I'm playing like this, and Thank it's you. it's more stressful for my hand. Yeah, that's that's interesting. The conscious and the subconscious. 
because subconscious for me is is this like literally it goes all the time like this oh i would like that (laughs) i see many violins but okay normally they teach you to this one to be straight and relaxed and have the whole you know Mm -hmm. so uh, but in the first second position i actually like it to be i mean depending on what you play of course for the sound if you do down vibrato um Mm -hmm. you know it's okay to have it like this if, Mm -hmm. if you do like vibrato this way too this way mm-hmm. yeah but if you do this way of course then it should be more straight logically right? oh of course yeah but if you do this one you know sometimes you do this vibrato, yeah just to have a you know more really <laughs> more comfortable so yeah but i had also uh, tend- tendinitis you know i had some some problems here and that was because of the change man the sudden change without the shoulder rest yeah and I suddenly played a lot of concerts from age 14. You know, I just toured all over the place. Mm-hmm. It was really the beginning of, you know, a lot of fun. So I, you know, I didn't take my time because you're young, you know, you just feel, uh, you know, immortal. Yeah. So you, you, you know, just, yeah, and, then, uh, and then later on when I was my early 20s, um, I mm-hmm. got some thing here, you see, in the little thing. Mm-hmm. Two. No, it's actually between these two. Muscle, just okay. in the middle between the two muscles here. Okay. And this point. So actually, one one friend of mine from uh, Kazakhstan told me, you know, the only trick is to just force it until it gets away. Just kill it. I mean, you know, just mm-hmm. practice eight, ten hours, and then and oh. it actually it actually worked. It it went away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Because the body is like you know machine, so it. Uh, it, you concentrate on, on that point where you have the problem and forcing it to, you know, with your mind, you know, really well to, to, to just, and of course you need to force it, it gets painful, but suddenly it disappears after. It's like a phenomenon, you know, from the body. That's like so this. interesting because yeah, but- for, like for the last week or so, I had um, quite bad tendonitis here. Okay. Um, and I can only rest. Okay. Is but it, may, does but it maybe next time I will try what you said. It depends. I, it worked with me, you know. I'm not, a, you know, advising it to to everybody. I'm just saying. Yeah, I would that's, say that's, that's, that's my, anybody, my story. <laughs> to anybody <laughs> watching, story. take take that with caution. Because, yeah, with caution. Yeah. Um, because your mind is is unbelievably powerful and um also enlightened you know Mm -hmm. maybe not all of us would be able to um control the work in the way that you would um so you know it's it's a strong mindset you really need to be strong for that yeah yeah Yeah, Yeah. exactly and so wouldn't advise it to fragile yeah yeah Yeah. like like me more (laughs) no but but you're strong too (laughs) you're strong too um so speaking of mindset do do you have i mean you talked about this a lot with us um with the previous project that we did about Mm. the general mindset of freedom when you play of Mm. taking risks of trying of experimenting um can you just speak to us for a few minutes about about that your experimenting um, and, also, and also just your your approach how not yeah. necessarily what you do but of what you hope yeah, yeah of course, do. Of course. Yeah. uh well <laughs> uh well I, you know um the freedom you know can you know i think it's relative but uh, it's um experimenting of course depends on i mean as a as a strict classical violinist if you go to the school, you you know you, you make sure you, you do what you need to do um, everywhere. Um, they don't really, I mean, you know that they mostly they don't let you really go, you know, experiment. I mean, in in my time when I was a kid, uh, I was very lucky with Dora because Dora's father was a, a Jewish folk violinist so it was very natural for to play Yiddish and you know acidic stuff 
so she loved it when I did gypsy music. So, but um, in other schools and like, I mean, they were like a bit, you know, no, 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 that's not, you know, this kind of. I think today it's it's quite different because they understood that it really helps actually to experiment. And so, um, my personal approach in 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 playing, for instance, now you know I'm 30, 35, and I just started to really, really look at the jazz. Mm-hmm. Because, for instance, in jazz, you really need to imitate mostly, well, the piano, of course, but the, the, the winds, so like the, the trumpet and uh, the, the, the saxophone, but mostly, you know. So searching for sounds, I think it's one of the very important, it's different sounds. Like me, most of the time, I'm actually trying to imitate the piano, especially in sonatas, you know. I'm trying to figure out how to get the, you know, the sound of the piano, yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, you know how they hit it, the pianissimos, the pedal thing, you know, to imitate the piano. So experimenting on this is is a huge benefit, I think, to everybody. Mm-hmm. Generally in chamber music, also, not to be always the violence and you know, but just search to you know, to be flexible in the music. Absolutely, yeah. um, mm-hmm. and to, uh, I, I think we become very concerned with a good, healthy, singular violin sound all the time. Yeah. And actually the violin can be a thousand different things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the violin used to imitate the birds. It was just maybe a hundred years ago, you know, it was a very normal thing, like an Escu, you know, those guys, Chrysler, you know, they, they just, even Milstein and, and all these guys, and they, they tried to, to imitate any kind of animals, you know, and then sounds, every kind of folklore music, you know, it was quite, and then there was a gap, you know, something happened and it became really strict, violent thing. But I think now it's coming back, you know, and it's uh, it's very important for the new, the kids, the new generation to, to really experiment as much as they can. And you're doing the greatest job ever, you know, <laughs> introducing them to this. Try, trying, uh, we're trying. <laughs> no, you're um, if you could tell us, if you want to share something that you struggled with the most, either in your mind or maybe something physical that was, or maybe something you still you still find a challenge for you. Yeah, I still, of course, do. Um, there were many different times, you know, um, that had... Uh, for instance, then an artist, and um, depending on everybody's life, you see, also, of course. But um, very challenging for me was to, to get, get away from the old school. For instance, the old school was a big challenge for me because it's so natural and there, you know, there's something so golden, great about those players. They were all so different and... And um, Ivory, for instance, who just left us uh, in Christmas, you know, Ivory Gitlis, he, he quoted, you know, um, a, a false note from Fritz Kreisler and Maria Callas is more worth than hundred hygienically clean, you know, most notes from, uh, you know, it's, it, there is a very important yeah. thing in this because, um, you know, the, cha- the challenge to, to, to play in a concert, so a concert is mostly to, to communicate what you feel. I mean, playing perfectly, perfectly and being always stressed is not very health, healthy, you know, like personally also, because the gap, you know, when you go to the concert, suddenly this, you know, uh, incredible, you know, how you call it, uh, euphoria, you know, this uh, thing. And then suddenly you're in a hotel room, you know, uh, the, the, the difference of this, you know, it's also to deal with this is quite difficult. So you need to be prepared for for these things. So I I was enough lucky to 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 know, you know, Ivry since I was thirteen and Ida handled like you know I told you about the last time uh, about these guys and they made sure that I never put away what I have already. This incredible thing about gypsy uh, music and. And that, that it will always help me in life. So I understood it later on because, you know, uh, some some parts, 
um, I had I had some 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 of the, the the problems were mainly in classical the product you know like okay what do you do do you play gypsy music or are you a classical violinist you know because both I did really really well and both were a good product but you know you know they, and I don't I didn't like it when they they wanted to put it in a box you know like you know that should be I think music great music is music I mean it's just um, to make people understand, of course, you cannot play a Beethoven sonata with the gypsy band, <laughs> but, maybe. <laughs> but, but may, maybe you can, of course, we are experimenting with the fact there was so many things. And before, actually, if you read well, um, Brahms and the gypsies at the time were so important to list and all this, you cannot even, the violin playing itself is gypsy. It's very much gypsy. The, the technical things, you know, and all this crazy uh, school they have on its own it's uh, especially the hungarian churches so um, and also the jewish um, you know the hasidic the old um, haifetz was a uh, very very traditional traditionally hasidic player he went to the to the synagogues in his early very early ages until 10 you know and uh, the, the the sound of the the, the priest you know when they sing, you know, Hasidic songs, that, that was in him, you know. So he, he reproduced this, he worked on this, of course, and then, but it's always there. Life it's phrasing this incredible, it's it's folk, it's, um, it's uh, you know, nature. So that is, for me, very challenging. It was very, very challenging, but I always thank myself to, to never give it up or you know to just focus on uh, you know strictly playing violin great thing you know because it gives you always flexibility also yeah and and thank goodness for, for all of us that love and enjoy your playing in all of its different um perspectives and all of its different colors i mean mm. um I uh, my only wish always is that more people would would have the courage um, to really accept all of what they are, you know, not just go single in this category or this, because of course that's much more comfortable. Um, yeah. It's much more safe. Um, yeah, but comfortable is not a, a, you know it doesn't mean it's it's. Um... It's interesting. No, not interesting. <laughs> the, the risks, the risks are the 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 ones that we love and we were uh, enough lucky to to hear them, maybe even yeah. uh, live or, or listen to them on CDs, you know, and um, were the ones that took risks. Yeah, and, absolutely. And uh, they they were, for instance, Ivory was a, an actor, you know, he, he didn't strictly move or playing violin, you know, he moved all around. Chrysler was a was a, was a uh, uh, he did medicine. He studied medicine, and he even left the violin for some time. And and was, you know, a full was, full life full of life people. people. Yeah, and that you can hear it also in their playing. Absolutely. They have this so you know individual, uh, wonderful you know, and they were great violinists. Plus, and they were playing with the soul. You know, the virtuosity was not like wow. The, okay, now I will play it perfect passage of course it was there but they they more used it in a you know they they were uh, yeah yeah with the soul you know they, they, the artist was in the soul and that what, what came you know like fireworks uh, Absolutely. Was the so i th i think it's it's kind of the this era where we are now it's it's kind of coming back you know i really feel it i, I see all the time that the young generation i have one student that I teach is like 13 and 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 everywhere where I see um, youngsters you know um, something is coming you know with all this crazy life we're surrounded now with you know we also need it as human beings you know to 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 search you know because after some time we all have enough of something always the same Absolutely. So, an er so. era of experimentation. Experimentation, and yeah, 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 exactly. Trying. Um, mm. So to, to, to finish, do you have mm. then, I mean, you've given so much advice already in this, in this chat, but <laughs> do you have any final, like, final words for the, for the young musicians? Um, yeah, I've, I would quote again what, what Ibri said about Chrysler and Callas, but um, um, I would really really ad advise to 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 take part i mean in, in your program because it's so 
so bright, you know, so 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 wide, and so much. They have they are so lucky to to be in uh, you know in your program and the sessions and to 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 use it also in in, in their personal lives, you know, with with friends and always search, always search as much as they can. Not only violin. Very important is not to listen all the time to violinists because you know what happens. You yeah, know? it's. Um, I would advise them to, to listen to a lot of pianists, a lot of folk music, very important to know all the, 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 the countries, the folk, the folk uh, uh, music of those countries can be European, even Brazil, you know, Argentina, South America, you have so much different yeah. kinds of uh, Latin American music. And this really will help all of them to, 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 to find colors because as we talked the last time about colors and, and singing, it's so important, right? And singers, of course, singers. Absolutely. That's well, definitely it helps. I feel um, inspired, genuinely inspired to go and, and play my violin like I did all the time when you were with us a few months ago. <laughs> Thank all you. the time inspired. <laughs> but um, you also inspire me a lot, really. I, 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 I changed everything with how I, how I was thinking. And, and then sometimes I, I fall back into the comfortable space, but I need to stay, uh, <laughs> stay <laughs> here. Um, Geza, thank you so much for your time. And thank you, Nikki. It was so nice to talk to you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.